Ta -da! It's super spotty. <laughs> I've never actually worn it, but I will one day. Um, sometime in the coming months, I will wear this jacket. I really think it's so cute. When I saw it, I just had to buy it. This one. I like this coat. This is my favorite winter coat that I wear. It's got like fur. I love it. Oh, I love this dress. I got this in DC. Um, at this second hand store called Buffalo Exchange. Um, and it's a Betsy Johnson. And I love Betsy Johnson. But her clothes are ridiculously expensive everywhere else. So I got it for like $20. I share a lot of my personal stories and my personal views and a lot of the time I refer back to rebranding HIV which is an initiative more than anything else um, which hopes to make people who are both infected and who have potential of getting infected and even those who don't have potential of getting infected look at HIV in a different light sort of you know this is normal it, you know it happens and you can live a healthy life with it and this is what it is because so many people I feel who aren't, who don't work in the sector, or who just young people at university don't really know what HIV is, and there's been so many mixed messages about what HIV is and who it infects and how to get, how one would get infected, etc. And so I try to touch more on those issues a lot of the times when I give talks. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of the time, people have misinformation. There's so much as well about, I mean, everyone talks about ARVs as if they're the miracle drug and they're going to save you and everything's going to be fine, but they do have their own, you know, set of problems. For instance, um, they are actually very, very toxic. Um, and so if you don't live a balanced life, have a balanced diet, try to exercise and stuff, um, then they won't be as effective as might want them to be because when I first started taking ARVs I got really I got more sick than I already was and if that were to happen to someone else who didn't know that actually that is what happens um, when you first take ARVs there's these horrible side effects where you're literally you bedridden for depending on you could be months um, before your body adjusts to the toxicity of the drugs and people don't know that people don't understand that side of it. I had this panel discussion and someone, some young guy was like, oh yeah, but you know, if I had 30 rand left and I had to buy, choose between buying a pack of cigarettes and condoms, I'd buy, you know, a pack of cigarettes. And you're like, this is someone who's supposedly <laughs> educated. And I was like to him, well, there's more to it than that, you know. You do get sick from them too. Um, you know, you still have the virus in you, and so, like for example, I can't do a lot of stuff. Like the traveling has worn me out. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm literally worn out, um, which it wouldn't have the same effect on someone else who didn't have the virus. Um, so there's other things that happen to you, either than just okay, I'm going to take a pill and everything's going to be fine. These cookie cutter campaigns and approaches to HIV and AIDS or dealing with HIV and AIDS are very problematic, um, which is why I came up with rebranding HIV, because I thought we need to look at HIV and AIDS like a brand. A lot of the times also when I'm giving talks, I try to bring that out and say, we can't just give out this information and say, okay, now everyone should say, this is how you deal with HIV and AIDS. Um, and the campaigns shouldn't just be exclusive for, you know, a cookie cutter thing and be like, okay, here you go. Everyone should just do this. Um, what about people who can't get condoms, for example, you know, just because you, these conventions or ideas that people have about HIV and AIDS that only promiscuous people get it, only gay people get it, only poor people get it, are so wrong. Um, it could really happen to anyone. Everyone, whoever gets in touch with me is like, ah, oh, Pindi, will you write for us? And I love writing, but all the time I'm writing about HIV and AIDS. Um, I wrote for one of my favorite magazines, Al, about HIV and AIDS. You know, I write for Young and the Life now every month about HIV and AIDS. So it just gets a bit exhausting and daunting sometimes. But um, I think the reward for that, really, the antidote for that is when you meet people or when people like Facebook you and like, oh my gosh, you read this article. And, you know, we feel much better about being HIV positive. There is some stigma 
but it's not as big as I thought it was when I first came out about my status, for example. Um, but a lot of people who are HIV positive, I think, first self-stigmatize themselves before anyone else does. They sort of start thinking, oh my gosh, I'm a bad person, I sleep around, I do X, Y, and Z. And they start judging themselves way before anyone else ever says anything about it. And I think that's the biggest problem. And that's why people aren't opening up and saying to their partners, you know, when they do have sex, when they do have children, I'm HIV positive so they can get the correct treatment. A lot of people do define me by my status, a lot of people who don't know me, but I feel like my friends, the people who do know me, the people who are close to me don't. I had good friends and they were okay with me and my status and I was fine with it, yeah. <laughs> I do a lot of things on my own. <laughs> Most of the things I do, I do on my own. Like Tuesdays, every Tuesday I go to movies by myself take myself out for lunch <laughs> and then every now and then when I'm bored and don't feel like working from home I'll go work at nice or my and bean and then I also go out with friends every now and then but I'd like to host more parties at home but a lot of the time I just like to stay home and watch movies and I like romantic comedies I'm a hopeless romantic <laughs> Um, I like experimenting in the kitchen. We have a few cookbooks, but I don't really use them because I feel like cooking should come naturally and it, you should use your instincts. And depending on what I feel like eating that day, I'll just throw stuff together and be like, okay, this tastes nice or it tastes horrible. Um, but most of the time it tastes good. I've had no complaints as of yet. <laughs> so I think I'm doing okay. My mom decided to build me a walk-in closet. Cause I had so many clothes. <laughs> um, oh, I like these, which I also bought in DC at Nine West. Um, cause they have glitter, and whenever I don't feel like dressing up, if I'm going out with friends and stuff, I'll put these on. <laughs> I love my Louboutins. They make me happy. <laughs> oh, that's a pin board. <laughs> I it was like it's actually a painting an old painting. it's a bad painting um and then I just pinned up stuff that inspires me pictures um my older sister an ex boyfriend of mine um my matric dance <laughs> um actually a motto from my high school is freedom with responsibility um you have the freedom to sleep with whomever whenever however you like, but you should be responsible about it, not just for yourself, but for your partner. So yeah. <laughs>